I think it must be spring, because yesterday morning on Spadina, there was a woman walking wrapped in maximum eight yards of sari cloth. It was sheer and a luminous color, like the nectar of pressed apricots. A red dot punctuated her brow, like a small and urgent point of energy had found its way to the surface of her skin, and jeweled or a drop of blood, it was gleaming. I think it must be spring, because there's not a host, but a quartet of daffodils sprung up in the front yard of Gore Vale. They stand not straight, but bowed over so, I think they might have had a hard time making it out of their frozen birthplace inside the earth. Nevertheless, they are here and have come in first, the runners up of the crocuses. But the evergreen never went under. It just spread its branches taut and took the worst winter had to offer. Do not go under. One day, today, you may be crowned with evergreen. Where I am born, there is no such thing as a cycle of the seasons. Seasons just shift over a bit to accommodate the one following. Winters there bring tangerine and pimento winds. And spring here is a peculiar ascension of ice falls finally away. And I think it must be spring now because today there is such tenderness towards all green things growing like you. U of T graduates, victorious, exhausted, glowing for all of you. Today it is undeniably spring. Thank you so much. It's so wonderful to be here. Let's <laughs> see you. Thank you. I know a teacher who happens to be a poet who tells her students that the first thing they should do upon receiving their degrees is to send flowers to their parents or whoever helped to put them through university. If, like some of you here, you have paid your own way, then send yourselves flowers. You deserve it. <laughs> because some of us believe that to undertake a task, any task, in your case, a rigorous, torts, a rigorous course of study, and to see it through to completion is the best thing that you can possibly do, and it is accepted by the universe as a form of prayer. Even if you do not believe in prayer. Puzzle me that. I used to feel self-conscious about saying such things out loud, especially to well-educated people such as you, the 2019 graduating class of the University of Toronto. But when I learned that no less a personage than Sigmund Freud once said that wherever he went, he found that the poet had already passed that way. So I took that as permission to freely share with others some of the odd and hopefully helpful things I've picked up over the course of my now long life as a practicing poet. I often tell my creative writing students that the brilliant image the heart-stopping phrase, the exquisite, yea, balletic turn that will power your work so that it sings to all of humanity is often there in your early drafts waving up at you. But sometimes you need someone to point it out. I was once wandering up and down the aisles of a certain department store, determinedly trying to find a splendid new outfit to wear for a special occasion, when an older store clerk called me over to her counter and said, everything you have on is better than what is being sold in this store. <laughs> she may well have been a disgruntled employee <laughs> or an activist with a strong anti-capitalist sentiment, working as an agent provocateur to overthrow the retail system from within. <laughs> but I took what she said as a message from a higher power, and I went home and did some shopping in my closet. Seriously, dear graduating class, as you venture out there into the great wide and utterly unpredictable world, 
Remember on your doubtful days that what you have been given here at the University of Toronto is deep and wide and precious, and it is more than enough to help you cope with the unexpected reversals and unscheduled pit stops you will encounter as you press on to reach your life's goals. We with the straight eyes and no talent for cartography are always asking, how far is it to Hearties? And they say, just round the corner. But that being the spider's directions means each day finds us further away. So take up the vining again and go into interpretation and believe the flat truth left to dry on your tongues. Truth says that Hearties distance cannot hold in a measure. It says, travel light, you are the treasure. For you are the treasure itself, as well as the recipients of priceless treasures. The extraordinary minds to which you have been exposed. The great books in one of the world's great libraries to which you have had access. The world-class research laboratories where some of you have labored to make discoveries that benefit all of humankind. All these things are within you now. You are the treasure. Never doubt how enriched you have become by being part of the great United Nations of people from all over the known world with whom we are now fellow travelers in this shining city. I was a stranger here and you welcomed me. So say many of us here, including my mother's sisters who first came to this country 90 years ago. Thank you, Canada. Thank you, Toronto. And thank you, thank you, University of Toronto. Yes, dear graduating class, you have much of what you need to make your way through the world now, provided you do not think that what you've earned here makes you better than other people. Because what you know are, are people who are appointed to help take care of the world. You are from henceforth minders and menders and repairers of the breach. At first, it seemed it was just the elders extending their limbs to a few disembodied red dresses. But now the forest is redolent with wind sock frocks twisting from branches of firs, pines and arbutus trees, where the shadow of a mother bear climbs upon the posters for native women missing. Bear scores at the hems of red dresses, many native women missing, peace, O oh, peace be on them. For there is one last strange thing that some of us believe, that there is always and has always been, from the beginning of time, a certain number of people were appointed to help take care of the world. People like the philosopher in the following poem, who is probably my husband, Ted Chamberlain, who stubbornly refused to see anything but hope and possibility, and the promise of spring, no matter how cold the winters. All is for tomb-rending time, when the ice garden revives full color. The chill blanket provided we take care of it, shields bulbs and forsythia. Rhododendrons, wheat and azaleas need downtime under ice cover. Chaste monk's hood, Indigo, iris, and lavender require annual dye bath of blue ice water. Still, then awake, the groundwater table risen so high, the faithful, come springtime, arrive walking on water. Go forth now and flower, O University of Toronto graduating class of 2019. Spring has sprung. Go send flowers to yourselves and to everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.